Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit different from me. And I never really know how to even start this or how to start speaking about it because I, I don't feel like I am fully educated on many topics out there in this world. And I think that that can be said for the majority of us to be 100% fully educated. But that's a lot of what this is about. It's about continuing to educate ourselves, even in the discomfort of the situation, talking about race-related issues and talking about other issues that are happening in the world are hard to talk about. We can see what's happening in the world and we can see the injustice that's happening, and how we need real systemic change in order to make a huge difference. If you don't know what's going on, in the last week, week and a half, there have been mass protests all over the country and frankly all over the world because of the murder of George Floyd. And I've been talking on my Instagram stories and on Twitter mostly about all of the things that are happening in the world right now, about the protests, about the police brutality that I've seen, and about the unfair treatment of black men and women in this country. And I have been trying to educate myself as best I can, watching video after video, reading article after article, and listening to the voices of people who experience this around the world. And I can try to sit there and shut up for a moment and educate myself because I feel that a huge part to play in all of this is to learn. Whether you feel like you know it all or not, the answer is we don't. It's it's okay to admit that you're that you don't know everything and that it's okay to change your mind and to learn. I think that for all of us, we should take a moment, stop arguing, start listening. If you get personally offended when somebody talks about racism or you get personally offended when somebody brings up Black Lives Matter, if you say all lives matter, I implore you to take a step back and realize why this needs to be about you. If you are sitting there saying, yeah, but all lives matter, right. Nobody said that they didn't. This isn't about saying that black lives matter more than other lives. It's to say that black lives matter too. And so many times in our history, they haven't. I think that there are many people in this world who put their fingers in their ears and say, no, mm -mm. I don't know how that is ever beneficial. And maybe if you can put yourself in that other person's shoes for just one moment, you could understand why. It's okay to not know everything and it's okay to learn something new. I think many times, many of us don't do that. We do not put ourselves in the other person's shoes and it's sad that it takes thinking of it happening to you for you to give a shit, but that happens many, many times where you say, what if it was your son? What if it was your dad? What if it was your mom? What if it was your sister? And then people can go, well, I'd be mad. Exactly, you should be mad and we should be upset and we should be fighting for justice and we should be listening and learning and we should be educating ourselves that maybe what we've been taught all of this time is not right. And even if you're 65 years old, even if your parents taught you things all throughout your childhood, try not to place those judgments on the entire rest of your life. There have been many laws and many things people believe to be true that when we look back in history, we cannot fathom existed in the first place. We cannot fathom used to be legal and we go, Wow, I can't believe nobody said anything. I can't believe nobody stood up against that. I can't believe that people used to go along with that. Yet that still happens today. It's crazy to believe people wanting equal treatment from the police, from lenders, schools, and jobs, that that is even a controversial topic that needs to be argued. It's, it's hard for me to even believe that there can be a counter argument to people wanting their lives to matter. It's so ungodly, just it doesn't actually, like my mind can't comprehend. When I see somebody say, yeah, but what about, this isn't about what about isms, they are not helpful. You can take any situation and say, yeah, but what about it? What about it? When somebody else says what's happening to them and how it affects them and how it's been hard for their life and how they want change, who do you think you are to stand back and say, no. And some people will fight you tooth and nail to try to make their point. And seeing all of the videos and seeing how often this happens, it's, sad, it's, it's frankly pathetic. We have people who are coming out and telling us, they're telling us what it's like. And for people to put their fingers in their ears and say, I don't want to hear it, is... It's, un, it's, it's frankly uncalled for and it's embarrassing. I would say if you're somebody that is like that, just, just take one moment and imagine that it's your family member and everybody else is putting their finger in their ears when you're trying to talk. Or imagine that the world uprises and says, enough is enough, all we want is change from the inside. We need change across the board. This isn't just about George Floyd, it's about what George Floyd represents across this country. And I am just, 
horrified to know how often this happens and how often nothing is done about it and how this is still happening as we speak right now and how even in the protest for change for George Floyd, it was happening across the board to protesters, people being racially profiled, people being wrongfully imprisoned over and over and over and over and over again because it is so ingrained in our society that people can't see it as wrong. But just like people at one time thought that slavery was okay, people at one time thought that drinking during pregnancy was okay, at one time it was legal to abuse your child, it was legal to do lobotomies on people with mental health issues without their consent, we can take this time to know just because right now certain things are legal, that doesn't mean they're okay. If we can stop arguing and start listening, then we can have a productive conversation. If people are putting their fingers in their ears and saying, nope, I don't believe it, I don't want to hear it, well, then enjoy living in the exact knowledge that you have right now for the rest of time because you refuse to learn, you refuse to listen, and you refuse to be educated on a topic that you might have been miseducated on previously. We can hear what other people are going through. We can see what other people are going through. And the fact that other people can hear it and see it and continually still try to close their eyes and ears is mind boggling to me. And so what I can do is use my platform right now, say that all of the money from this video that I make on the AdSense from this video, I am going to donate to which organization in this moment, I am unsure. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video that gives a ton of different organizations. And I would love your feedback in the comments of which one you think would be the most beneficial to donate the money to. Trending tags will tend to change. News media stations will stop reporting on the protests, which are still happening by and large in huge numbers as I am recording this, but you're just not hearing about it as much because a week has passed and news moves on. And it's sad to say this doesn't change for black people in this country. And even though it's not trending anymore, that doesn't mean that anything has changed. And what today I'm going to do is I'm going to be highlighting some black owned makeup brands. I don't know if I have an entire full face. I think I'm pretty close. I think people can say that it comes off as performative. I understand. I've seen the feedback and I've seen people's, uh, you know, thought process surrounding everything. Totally understand. I would rather say something and potentially say it wrong than say nothing at all. Uh, I have a lot of brands that have been recommended to me that I actually don't even have, and I would love to try. And so I'm gonna be placing some orders and hopefully trying those brands out in the future. But I do have some today that I've already spoken about on my channel, Know and Love. So I am gonna be doing that today. I apologize for the huge rant. I hope that it didn't come off too preachy. And like I'm saying that I am all knowing. I am not all knowing and I will continue learning every day for the rest of my existence. That is exactly what all of us can do. I am going to first start off with my eyes, actually. I was going to start off with my complexion and then the complexion product that I'm gonna be using today is actually from Fenty. And I know by using Fenty, I'm using some sort of beauty giants in here. They're already doing well. Everyone knows who Fenty Beauty is. Owned by Rihanna and I believe she's not fully owned. So Kendo is part owner of Fenty Beauty, but Rihanna is the other portion of that. So I'm gonna do my eyes first though today. And for that, I'm gonna be using a couple of different brands. So the first brand that I'm gonna be using and highlighting is Makeup Addiction Cosmetics. Now they have fantastic eyeshadows. If there's one thing Makeup Addiction does right, well, it's a few things, but they have amazing eyeshadows. So this is the Meadow palette right here. And this is the colors. Now they may look randomly placed in here. They are so beautiful though. They are a beautiful, beautiful formula and the pans are huge. I love the formula of Makeup Addiction eyeshadows so much so that I actually had a brand ask me like, what's your favorite formula of eyeshadows? And the first thing that popped in my mind was Makeup Addiction because they're so pigmented, they're so high quality and they're just, they're just beautiful. But another thing, Thing from Makeup Addiction that I really, really love is their brushes. So you guys see me use this brush all the time. This is the Makeup Addiction Expert Blender Brush. And this is, I think I used this in my last two videos, but maybe just my last one. And this one right here is a fluffy, fluffy blending brush. Really, really good for getting that super blown out, really softly applied crease color. And so I really love the Expert Blender Brush. I don't know if the Meadow palette's one that I'm gonna be using today. I might use a shade from it. This is another palette from Makeup Addiction. This is called the Smoked Out Palette. This one's got a lot more shimmers than it does mattes. Another brand that has really, really good eyeshadows that I actually, I've done a review on a Glam Light eyeshadow palette before it was the Burger Palette. I'm gonna link it up here. Glam Light is a brand that like, this is the paint palette. I've actually never done a review on this yet. Um, but these are really good eyeshadows actually. 
they have very gimmicky products. So you'll see like the burger palette that you've seen before, the taco palette, the paint palette. You've seen those probably pop up everywhere on social media. Glam Light is also a black owned beauty brand, which is amazing. And they have really nice quality eyeshadows. And then I also am gonna be featuring JD Glow, which I have a whole video where I was testing out JD Glow. I'm gonna put it up here. Wow, JD Glow is a brand that is so highly underrated. And I've talked about them in that video and I, I highlighted a bunch of the beautiful single shadows that they have. Honestly, they're single like glittery shadows. They're there is nothing that my camera could pick up to show you the gorgeousness of these. They are unbelievable looking. Not only that, but they have these individual pigments as well. And these are just unbelievably gorgeous. Truly, they are so, so stunning in every single way. Um, I think I wanna do a color that I don't typically do. Okay, I'm feeling blue. I'm feeling like I wanna go in with this shade right here. This looks absolutely beautiful. Probably blend it out with a bit of this here. And then I wanna use some of the JD Glow colors to like pat on the inner corner to make that like gorgeous sparkle. Literally, you guys, they are so unbelievable. And I'm gonna start by priming my lids and I'm gonna be using the Fenty concealer for that. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this color here from the Makeup Addiction Meadow palette. And I'm gonna go in with that same Makeup Addiction Expert Blender and I'm going to take that into the crease just to give me that nice transition color. I used this in a video, oh my gosh, it was probably like two years ago. I'm gonna link it up here. And it's still to this day, one of my favorite eye looks. It ended up so beautifully. I still go back to it to look at the picture I took of it every now and again, because I'm like, dude, that eyeshadow is like stunning. So you can even see, even though this looks like a very soft nude shade, it does show up quite a lot on the eyes and it blends out really nice. I wanted to use this shade because often when I use a like blue shade, I wanna go in with something neutral first so it's not just blue all the way up. It can kind of make it, I hate to say wearable because any eyeshadow is wearable, but it can sort of help make it a little bit more quote unquote wearable. And I'm going to dip into this shade here from that same palette. And I am going to tap it on the inner and outer corner. Wow, that's beautiful. Sort of taking that out in a little bit of a V on the outer corner here. I'm gonna take that same brush that I used before for the other shade and just sort of tap that over and sort of soften the edges of that. Sort of muddied up a little bit because I probably shouldn't have done that last step, but I'll figure it out. I'll make sure that it looks good. So I'm gonna take a little, little, little bit of this shade here and try to blend it on the outside of that to add some warmth. I'm gonna take a brush that's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go with the Makeup Addiction Smoked Out Palette. I'm gonna take this shade right here from the palette, probably mixed in with a little bit of these two. I'm gonna go with those lighter shades and just sort of try to um, lighten up a bit of this outer portion here. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to remedy this. I feel like I was doing kind of a shit job with color placement. So I'm gonna take this shade here from the Smoked Out palette. I'm gonna take a bit of that on my brush and just take it right above that blue shade. And I feel like this color is a little more suited for that than the other was. So if I am correct here, I think I have a JD Glow shade that has sort of these same tones in it. It's almost like a duochrome reddish to blue. I th think I do. You know, I actually just found these two and they're so beautiful. I think I wanna use these. Trust me, I know this isn't looking that great right now, but I think it will. So I'm gonna take this red shade. This is the JD Glow shadow in Ruby. And I'm gonna take that on my finger. Oh my God. 
so beautiful. And I'm going to tap that right here. And I feel like it will tie these shades in together and give a really, really nice, like grungy smoky eye. And then I'm gonna take this shade here, which is unexpected. Oh my God, it's seriously so stunning. It's like cry worthy. Look at this. Nothing could do justice to how be beautiful this is. And this is sort of that like blue duochrome with like a reddish brown shift. And I'm gonna tap that on the center. These have an incredibly soft, soft feel to them. It's just, it's so unique. They almost feel like wet, but not. Ooh, that's actually so stunningly beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that ruby shade and tap it over the edges here. So like the red is clearly defined in there. Oh yeah. Ooh, I like red and blue together like that. It looks so pretty. I don't know if camera's making this look like absolute and utter dog shit or not. Cause like these colors on camera, they look muddied together, but in person it looks so pretty. I'm gonna take a little bit of a makeup remover wipe right here. I'm gonna just sort of clean up the bottom edge. But those colors together look so pretty and grungy. I cannot even tell you. Ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other eye real quick and I will be right back. Okay, eyes are done and I really, really like them. I can see why maybe some of you might comment like those kind of look muddy. It's the color choices that I made. I mixed kind of like a warm orangey brown in with a blue and then a red over top, which can sometimes muddy up and I feel like it did a little bit over here. This eye's not so bad because I was a little more careful about it, but had I been a little more careful on my application and on my color choices, I feel like it would have been a little bit better. But as far as quality of the eyeshadows go, they blend incredibly well. And especially these JD Glow are unbelievable. I'm sure that you can see they are just so stunning. And I love red and blue together. I feel like those are such nice complementary colors. So now I'm gonna work on the skin and I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty Hydrating Longwear Foundation. Now I believe I've done a full review on this. If I do have one, I'm gonna link it up here. I remember when I used this, I'm thinking it was almost too hydrating. So I do have a little bit of a powder here today um, that hopefully if it is a little too dewy for me, then I will have something to kind of counteract that. Too dewy for me is like a shocking statement because I love a dewy foundation, but this one is like wet. Bitch, she's wet. So, but it's really beautiful. Oh yeah, it has that typical Fenty smell for their foundation and complexion products, which is like, it's almost like a really good smelling baked good. Almost smells kind of cover girlish, but the coverage on this is really beautiful and I want to continue giving it more of a try because I did wear it, but I didn't set it at all. I typically do not set my foundation at all. I like to keep my foundation very dewy, but this one is one that I think I just remember it being too dewy because the regular Fenty Beauty Pro Filter, I think it's called foundation is way too matte for me because I have dry textured skin. And this one is nice though. It has a beautiful finish as you can tell. It's got very skin-like, fresh, healthy appearance to it. This shade that I am using, by the way, is the shade 220. It's a little bit warm on me, but I'm using what I have. I'm gonna put some inner corner highlight on a little bit later in the video because I feel like the inner corner of my eyes is just a little too dark. So I will be doing that. So you see how absolutely so glossy this is on my skin. That's what I mean when I say like this shit is dewy. It is dewy. This is one I've got to take down my neck today for sure because the color is just a little bit too warm and a little bit deeper than I am. We're just gonna make do with what we've got and lighten it up a little bit with some lighter concealer and this shall work. My skin is breaking out so bad right now. So you see how absolutely shiny that is? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put my concealer on. I'm gonna be using the Fenty concealer as well. I'm gonna be using Pro Filter concealer. I'm gonna kind of mix a couple of shades of this just to get the right color for this foundation. Oop, that's a little dark. And this is the shade 235. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of this one, which is 120. I probably have the correct shade. I just couldn't find it. So we're just gonna do a little mixture. Oh, no, that one works. And I'm definitely gonna be powdering my face cause bitch, she shiny. Okay, so we're looking sufficiently wet. I'm gonna be using some of the Fenty 
powder for this and this is the shade butter and this is um, the pro filter powder and these are really 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 nice they are really mattifying I'm not going to use an absolute ton of it I am just going to take a bit of it and kind of spot do it I'm not going to bake my face at all but I feel like we could definitely use a little bit less shine for sure. And the natural dewiness of my skin is going to seep through throughout the day. This Fenty powder is beautiful. Beauty Bakery apparently has a really good powder as well. I have not tried it. They are also a black owned makeup brand and I've heard nothing but good things about their company. I have only tried the Lip Whip from Beauty Bakery, which I do have here in front of me today, but I definitely wanna try more. So if you guys have any recommendations on good products to try from them that I need to get, let me know for sure. So you can see this powder really mattifies. It is beautiful. They have different shades of this as well. Um, I'm using the shade butter, but my sister uses the lavender shade. I think it's called lavender. I'm not hundred percent sure, but she loves it. Super, super brightening. But you can see I'm really not caking it on. You can't see where I'm putting it necessarily because I am dipping into it. And then I'm really like tapping off a lot of the excess powder so that it's not like baking because I don't want to be cakey at all. I definitely just want to reduce some of the shine. I'm going to bake a little bit down here by these because we need those to really sink back. And the more matte something is, the more it doesn't highlight. It's like when you paint a room and it's really textured walls. If you use a glossy paint, it's gonna be really obvious, all that texture. But if you use a flat paint, it will hide those imperfections. Same with foundation. In areas where I really want it to like sink back and not be obvious, that's where I'm gonna use the powder. But as you can see, it really toned down how absolutely shiny my skin was. And that's a lovely finish right there. Okay, so now to this point, I'm gonna let my face set for just a moment and I'm going to take similar shades that are on the top and smoke them down on the bottom to get that kind of grungy look to come down into the rest of the eye. Beep, 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 and boop, and scream, bop. Okay, where is it? Okay, so here's that brush that I use. I wanna use a smaller one. I don't wanna go in with a huge fluffy brush for this because it'll take it down a little too far, but I'm sort of connecting the lower lash in with that red shade from the smoked out palette. ties it in that looks pretty you can kind of run it into that and down so that it clearly meets up with that outer shade people always laugh at me when I make that face and you know what do what you got to do damn it so now I'm gonna take that bigger fluffier brush and take that and just sort of buff out the edges so that it's nice and soft and not at all harsh and then I want to take a little bit more of that um, shiny shade, which was the one from JD Glow, which is unexpected. And I'm going to take a little bit of that and I'm just going to tap that right into the bottom center. I love shimmer on the lower lash line. I think it's so pretty. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't do very often, but it, I don't know. I just feel like it looks really good and draws the eye down as well. And then I'm going to put some mascara on the lower lashes. So that is the eyes and I love them. I think I'm going to put a little bit of a lighter shade on the inner corner. I'm going to take the Meadow palette from Makeup Addiction and there's a really light shimmery shade in here, right here. And I'm going to take that on my finger and I'm going to just gently dab that onto the inner corner just to add a little bit of shimmer right in there. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, I think that's very beautiful. I love these eyes, I think they look so pretty. I am gonna do my brows off camera real quick and I will be right back and we are gonna move on to the rest of the face. Now that my brows are on, I am gonna move on to the bronzer on my face. Because I already used a bit of powder, I don't want to use a cream product because I like to put cream on top of unset foundation. So I'm gonna go in with my Shady Biz bronzer from Fenty. And this, as you guys know, I mean, you can tell I hit pan on it, so I, really like this bronzer. I have used the shit out of it. It's a really, really beautiful product. I really, really like it. It's a good color for my skin tone and Fenty has a really inclusive shade range as well. This foundation isn't looking like as smooth and good as I like. I generally prefer uh, foundation that like I don't have to powder because I don't like the look of powder on my skin. It's just looking a bit textured, especially around this area right here. Even though I'm using this foundation today, I really, I do like it, but at the same time, I just feel like it's a little bit too finicky for me to work with as far as being too dewy. So, I mean, it ends up looking really beautiful on the finished product, but again, just to give my honest opinion on it, I don't, 
It's not like my ultimate favorite foundation. It is beautiful though. Especially if you have really dry skin. If you have really extremely, extremely dry skin, I would definitely give it a try. If you are oily, um, I'm gonna steer clear. I'm gonna say steer, steer clear. But what I would say is you could, if you're very oily skin, then I would say to try the Fenty uh, Pro Filter regular foundation, not the hydrating one, because that one is extremely matte and it did work for a lot of people. It never worked for me because it is so, so, so matte that it just made my skin look absolutely parched and uh, so I need a little bit of blush. I'm gonna use a little of the Fenty Cream blush. I know I didn't wanna use cream product, but I think this will go over just fine. This is strawberry drip. I think the cream blush will sit over this just fine. I was just a little nervous with using the bronzer. Oh yeah. It's actually really pretty. I've used the crap out of these since I first got them. They're probably one of my more used makeup products, the cream products. I have a whole video up here. I'll try to link it. Sometimes it doesn't let me link as much as I want to link. It's like, you're linking too much. I'm like, okay, well, don't tell me what to do because you're not my real dad, okay, YouTube? Ooh, that looks really pretty. I like that, like, excessive blush. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep my face at this level, and I think for highlighter, I'm actually gonna use a bit of that shade that I used from Makeup Addiction on my inner corner, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of that like on the tip of my nose. Ooh, it's pretty. It's an eyeshadow, but it's like the size of a highlighter, you know? The pans are so large. Ooh, that's really pretty, actually. Ooh, that's beautiful. Okay, now for lips. I'm gonna be going in with the Beauty Bakery Lip Whip, and this is actually one that was in collaboration with Cosmo by Haley, so this is not brand new. I'm shocked that I don't have anything else by Beauty Bakery. I swear I did, but I am not having an, an easy time finding it, but if you saw my makeup room, you'd know why. These are a liquid lipstick. Now, I typically shy away from liquid lipsticks because they dry down and I have extremely small lips. <laughs> so I tend to not like things that make my lips look kind of crusty or that are uncomfortable. But the thing about these lip whips are they have a very, very beautiful formula. They are one of the more comfortable formulas that I've worn. And if you buy these, you're gonna wanna buy these. Now I am, again, this has been a while since I got these, but this is the lip whip remover pads. You need this because they are so impossible to remove if you don't have those. You could probably find some other oil makeup remover, but honestly, these are so long lasting that if you need like the longest lasting, they're probably one of the longest lasting liquid lipsticks I've ever used. I'm gonna use this kind of like on the inner portion of the lip. This is the shade Salted Caramel Mocha. You know I don't like to outline my lips at all. I mean, I have before, but I typically don't like to. So to get that color on there, that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna go in with these. These are new from Fenty. These are the Slip Shine Sheer Shiny Lipstick. That was a mouthful. And I don't know exactly what color I wanna go in with, but I've seen people using these on Instagram and they look absolutely beautiful. I don't know what color, maybe I'll use this one. This is the shade Glazed. So, you know, I did that video, I'll, I'll link it up here, and I did the video on the cream products and I showed that they have a lot of sweating. Fenty messaged me and said, hey, that's normal, it's from the heat. So when they sent these over, they sent them with an ice pack. And I thought that was such a cool addition into the PR package so that they didn't, you know, melt in the post. And I don't have any issues with sweating on these guys. And these are a sheer lipstick. So um, we'll see how these go on. But as you can see, the Beauty Bakery dried down completely matte. It's not fully, fully, fully dry yet but it's pretty transfer proof. That's because it's a little bit wet. These are not going anywhere. So if you have like a long shift at work and you want something that's going to stay, these are going to stay. So this is the shade Glazed. Ooh. Well, these feel like a bomb. So that gives a nice shine to the lips without it needing a gloss. So that's how shiny the lipstick is from Fenty. Um, let me see if there's a lighter shade that I can use. This is the shade 01 Quartz Candy. I think this one is like a clear with a sparkle in it. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's like a balm with sort of like a sparkle in it. That's pretty. What is that smell? Mm, candy, it smells like just candy. Really nice. All right, and that is a pretty much full face of black owned beauty brands. I know that I didn't feature a ton of new brands. I apologize for that. That is on me. I'm gonna be doing some ordering, but I would love your feedback first. So if you've tried anything from Oma Beauty, from Colored Rain, from any other indie, or they don't have to be indie black owned beauty brands, I would love to try them. I would love to expand what I am trying and promoting here on my channel. I feel like all of these brands are brands that I've used before and have loved. And honestly, all of the products are very high quality and I've loved using them. If you're interested 
interested in learning a little bit more, please click on the links in the description of this video. Try to read some different resources. There are great documentaries out there. Listen to people with a platform who are out there speaking and are trying to make change. I hope that my message came across the way that I wanted it to and that we can start uplifting different brands and you know using our voices for good. And so that's all I can really hope for. Um, leave any comments down below. Any Thing abusive is absolutely going to be deleted. I'm not gonna stand for it, but constructive feedback or constructive comments are always welcome. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope you guys discovered some new brands that maybe you weren't aware of before. All right, well, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. There's also another brand here. So I have another eyeshadow palette from, wait, where's Makeup Addiction? Where did it go? Hello? No. Ugh. Makeup addiction. Where'd it go? Did it fall? I swear to you, on my life, it was sitting right here. Mmm. Where is it? I, it, oh. It's right here. It, it, it is sitting right here.